وقاب In this video, I want to share with you guys another cool little gadget that I installed into my car. What I'm talking about is a heads up display. I did a video previously on a different type of heads up display and that is one where it reflected the information via a reflective screen onto your windscreen. Now the reason why I optioned for this one instead was due to the fact that the display doesn't have the issues that the reflective one has. Not only does the reflective one need that reflective screen but it also doesn't work that well in direct sunlight meaning that you cannot see the information clearly it is very good at night time because you're not having issues with the Sun this type of heads-up display that I used is called a aslope I hope I'm saying that right it sounds really funny to me but anyway it's a heads-up display that has its own display it doesn't reflect the information at all it's its own little display it does the exact same thing as most heads-up displays it connects via your OBD2 socket and it displays the information onto its display screen. It's a very small screen, but it's very beneficial to have. And one of the main benefits in having a heads up display is that it helps to increase that little bit of safety in that you don't have to take your eyes off the road in order to see your speed or things that you're trying to monitor with the car. Which brings me to my next point. The another benefit in having a heads up display is that you can monitor your car's health as you're driving. It displays all sorts of information and you can choose what you want it to display. Also, it can also even erase some trouble codes. Now, it may not do all trouble codes, but it can do the typical trouble codes and you're able to erase them using this heads up display. At least that's what it says in the owner's manual. If it says it can do it, then most likely it will be able to do it. However, even though it's a newer type of heads up display and it plugs into an OBD2 socket, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will work with all OBD2 sockets. Usually it works with anything above, I think 2000, I'm not too sure about that, but it still only works with selected models. So if you're interested in buying something like this, I'll leave a link in the description below and be sure you check out whether this heads up display works with your car before you buy it. Do not just buy it hoping that it will work. Let's jump in the car and I'll show you guys exactly how you go about installing something like this and also how you route the cables in order to make it look as factory as possible. Let's do that. What I'm doing is installing it in the bottom right hand corner right here. Now it's also designed to go against your A pillar but because this A pillar isn't completely flat I decided to install it in the top right hand corner instead because at least it's going to be flush against the dash to install it here we need to hide the cables in the bottom right corner in between the door and the dash so in order to route the cable to your dash you have to remove your a pillar you need a trim removal tool and all you do is you put it in here and you help pry it out when you pry it out a little bit you then pull down your weather strip pull out as you pull up and then it clips out you simply just pull it out and pull it back and that's it the reason why we pull it back is because if you look up here you can see that there is a clip that sits in there and that's this one right here this sits in there and then it slides in and locks into place so that's why you need to pry it back a little bit and then pull on it backwards that way it unclips from this mounting point with that remove what you do from here is you come on this side here and then you remove everything on this side so that you can route the cable what we need to do next is remove this side piece here so that we can see where we're going to route the cable for the obd2 display you just need this trim removal tool you put it in between here and just pry it out look at that look how easy that came out as you can see here this is how i routed the cable i simply tucked it in behind the dash here and then it just simply routes down and then i folded it up a couple times and then i just dropped it down and hid it behind here and then i plugged it into the obd2 socket which is just underneath here so here we are underneath the car as you can see next to your hood release lever this red switch is this obd2 port right here all you do is you pull it down as you can see right there there's a lever just here you pull that back it exposes the obd2 port and then you simply just plug it in like so and that's it that's how easy it is to route this cable and make it look as 
clean as possible without having any cable showing. Zip tie it down so that it holds in place. This is also very useful when it comes to routing your dash cam because being able to remove your A-pillar is going to allow you to route all different types of electronics using this part of the car. Just going to reinstall everything and I'm gonna take you guys through how you use this type of OBD2 display. Let's put the side case back in, line it up, and then once it lines up, you push it in. And that's back on now. And next, put back our A-pillar. When you look here, you're going to see these two metal tabs. This part of the A-pillar has to sit in between the dash and the metal tabs. That way it slides in and locks into place and it clips in. So this is how we're going to do it. So this clip here, it has to go into the bigger part of the clip here. Just line it up. Okay, so you put that in first like so and then you simply push it in so it clips and once it clips in you slide it forward and that will lock it into place like so and that's it now from here all you need to do now is replace your weather strip you just have to line it up make sure it's tight and fitted all the way or else your weather strip won't fit in properly you push it in just pull your weather strip out so it's over your side panel like so just give it a tap in, make sure that it's completely fitted. Okay, and that's it. So now I'm gonna show you guys how this heads up display works, all the cool features of it. Briefly, we won't go through every single feature because there are quite a lot. Let's just start her up and let's just see what it has to offer, how you basically navigate this type of heads up display. It's not the best, but it definitely does look better than if it was on the A-pillar over here because it has a flat base and it would have a gap over here because it's not completely flat the a pillar let's get into this i'll put the key in we'll turn it on and we'll go through some of the functions quickly okay there we go Acelope. right now i have it showing the kilometers and the rpm because basically that's all i really want to see but the good thing is i also set up a secondary screen where it shows your direction of travel and also your speed. Your speed is always going to be the number one thing you want to display as it will prevent you from having to look down onto your speedo and take your eyes off the road, thereby increasing safety. Your RPM is also important if you like to keep track of how fast you're going and trying to conserve fuel. Now, this is another type of display where it actually shows the time, the RPM, your speed, and now for the next screen, this is probably the best screen. This is the one that displays all the important information like your speed, your battery voltage, your RPM, your fuel consumption, and also your coolant temperature and the time. This is basically what I always want to be able to see whenever I'm traveling in my car. That way I'm constantly monitoring the things that I want to monitor. Now, if you drive a turbo car, amazingly, this has a digital boost gauge. So you're able to keep track of your boost pressure. This is in KPA, but you can change it to PSI as well. So that's really cool if you drive a turbo car. Now we know Mercedes-Benz does have a turbo model, so that's very good for that matter. Next we have our acceleration. So you can even do zero to 100 kilometers an hour, how fast it does it and the speed that it does it in. Next we have our braking test. You can even do a brake test on this. So that's really cool. And this is the main functions that this device has to offer. As you can see, it shows you things like PIDs, DTCs, you've got your fuel system, your engine load, your coolant temperature. So I'll turn on the car right now because I have it off and you'll see it actually shows all these different functions clearly. It has the fuel system, it has the engine load, coolant temperature. If we go down, it has a second page as well. Here we have the oxygen sensors, we have the GPS, GPS time, GPS speed, GPS cog, GPS MSL, GPS longitude, latitude. A lot of useful information that a heads up display like this has to offer. Another cool thing is this page here. It shows the voltage, it shows your absolute load, the equivalent, your throttle position, air temperature, throttle position, throttle position two, position four, position five, throttle CMD. It shows your warm up count, distance to DTC, air pressure, airflow, catalyst, PIDs, system status, oxygen sensors, OBD type, 
engine runtime, DTC distance, EVAP, fuel levels. So, you know, it's amazing, just absolutely amazing the amount of information that this little heads up display has to offer and that's why in the end I option to get one like this because it shows me all this critical information that is very important if you are someone who likes to monitor your car stats constantly and it really is just a click away that's the reason why I really wanted to show you this type of heads up display monitoring your car stats is very important especially if you want to keep it in top shape another thing with these heads up displays it's not the same for every car how you set the speed some cars are going to have different settings currently my speed is probably out by one or two kilometers per hour and what you need to do in order to adjust it is either go up in percentage or down now it's going to be different for every car so you just have to play with it a little bit and find which is going to be the exact setting for your car we'll take it for a test run and we'll see is it accurate and if it is then we know to leave it on that setting okay so now we're gonna go for a test run let's see if it all works out just right so I can see we're on 19 we'll go on cruise control and let's just see if it works if it's in sync right now I can see it's pretty good at the moment the H the heads up display showing me 22 the speeds on 23 25 27 let's cruise on a constant speed and see if it matches okay cruise control on 33 let's see how it does we're cruising on 33 right now the cars on 32 h2d is on 33 and looks like it matches up really well guys Twenty nine, twenty nine. Okay, thirty, thirty. All right, it looks like we are on the right one, guys. So it seems that for my particular car, the best setting would be plus seven percent. So I'm going to leave it on that because I think that is going to be the best setting for my car. That concludes our setting. The the RPM is right and the temperature is right as well so we're going to leave that the way it is we don't have to change it at all because it is displaying the correct information according to the heads up display and the car now before I go I also wanted to point out that if you're wondering why I'm doing all these different videos on PC mods it's just because I want to share with you guys some of the other things that I have a passion for and PC mods is one of them. I will be doing more car mods, more car videos and even adding more content to the channel as well so rest assured that I am not straying from car mods or anything like that it's just I want to share with you guys other things that I have a passion for as well if, it, if you're not into it then by all means you don't need to watch it but I would really appreciate it if you checked it out and uh, gave it a like but well, that brings us to the end of the video I hope you found this video helpful guys and if you did don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads until next time this is Mike with Mikey's vlogs signing off I'll see you in the next one guys